high. Oh, channel. I'm here. <laughs> I thought I would play, I'd play some songs. I got, I got bored. I got bored. I thought I'd play some songs. Song. <laughs> Hi, I don't really stream on the old channel. I don't, I don't really do much. How are we all? Why? Dunno, felt crazy. Thought I'd start an old stream. Felt crazy. Good. All right, that's kind of hype. I got so confused. How many people here, hear me out. How many people here right now never get notifications for the main channel but got a notification for here? Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. It's so scuffed, bro. It's so scuffed. It's so scuffed. Unbelievably scuffed. Bruh. Bruh. Fucked it up. There we go. Fucked it up again.
Never ending story and Animal Crossing, they sound very similar. At like that one point where it's like. And then never ending story. Like they kind of, they kind of, they kind of sound the same, you know. So what are you doing today? I don't know. We shop. <laughs> That's all I can remember of that one. That's all I can remember. Minecraft, I, don't, I can't do any Minecraft songs, like, except for the... No! One of my piano keys just broke. No. Oh, and it's one I use all the time. This is so sad. This is so sad. Low A, come back. Octave 2A, come back. This is so sad. This is so sad, gang. Can you still do falling down? Yeah, probs. Exclude the killers. Ah, uh, I don't know if I remember that, man. This is the office theme. Not, not anything like what you just asked. Like the office theme, the owl house. Oh God! Uh. That's one I know. I don't know many other songs. Life by the Sea, what like that? Uh, 
I can play that one. Nokia ringtone. I can do... I don't know. I can also do. <laughs> Gravity Falls, I can do that. like that I thought Tub of Life was dead yeah yeah Megalovania I don't know that many that many songs, lads. I'll be real, I don't know that many songs. Mans doesn't know that many songs. Learn a new one, learn a new one. A whole new song. It's all right, you entertain us. Thank you, lad. Radioactive, yeah, I can do that one. All right, I might not be able to, my key's dead. Oh, that's so upsetting, I'm gonna have to fix that.
recovery. Nope, I fucked it up because I spoke. Ah. That was an attempt. Dissatisfying. Missed the last note of the chord. Oh. 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 Tubbo leave. All right. So that's going to be the stream for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm still here. I'm still here. Ooh. I don't know. What's the vibe today, boys? Because, like, I don't know. I'm not really feeling it at the minute. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, like, not feeling streaming. I'm just, like, not feeling it in general. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yes, just say it. You want to play City Skylines? So true. So true. So, 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 so true, 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 true. So, so, so. The key's broken. Oh, it sucks. It sucks. Rushy, I can't do that. Everyone asks that. But I just, I just can't. Don't know what to tell you, lads. It's outside of my area. It's outside of my realm of knowledge. It's outside of my realm of knowledge. Look at DMs with Henny. Oh. oh, it's a real stream. I gotta check DMs. Oh, it's because all the fucking mods aren't modded. Oh, that's how long it's been. Oh. 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 Ugh. Privileges have been granted. I grant privileges. I'm 
throwing. I'm throwing. I'm throwing. I'm actually throwing. I'm throwing. I'm throwing. Why am I throwing? I'm throwing. I'm actually throwing. 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 I threw. I threw. Too bright. It's too bright in here. Too bright. It's too bright. Eyes hurt. Now for a chill song. Good song. Good song. Good song. Good freaking song. Very pretty. Very pretty. Tubby, you seem sad. I seem so sad. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. No, it's because it's 11 p.m., bro. It's 11 p.m. And streamer don't have coffee if streamer don't need to be live, bro. Guys, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. No. I'm not really. He's so sad now. No, I just kind of, I was just kind of thinking about stuff I want to make, you know? I was like, I've got so much stuff I want to make. And I feel like it never quite materializes how I want it to. You know what I mean? 
You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, ah. I was thinking about it. I was like, ah, ah. Yeah. Jurassic Park theme. I don't know the Jurassic Park theme. Like three blind blind mice. Learn it then. I could. We shop. I did that one. The the.
not. They should come out. Let's just catch them. There's nothing for us to be catching. What? What? Why 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 you look more? What? What? Oh, oh. That makes sense. It has latches. There we go. All right. Why this key stop work, eh? That's not being moved. What are you hitting? Why? 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 Why did you stop? You should be working fine. Is there something in there? Look, the key works. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh. Oh. Something wrong with this bit. Hello. What happened? What happened? Catching something. This one doesn't catch anything. What happened, bro? Huh? I need more. I need to see more. Show me more piano. Why did you break? Why did this key break? I'm gonna lose my mind. Why did it break? Wait, what? No. What broke here? What are you? You're rubbing on something. Something's blocking you from going all the way up. What is... Oh! I see the issue. I see the issue. There's a bit of wood there that shouldn't be. Okay. Where's it meant to be? Okay, it's meant to be down. Alright. Okay, I see the issue. Okay. I can fix this. Petition for everyone just to play the piano with it open like that so you can see all the stuff moving. Tell us it's not your string broken. Now the string's fine. Look, listen. It's just a little bit of wood here that has become unstuck and is now 213. All right. I don't even know how to get to that, dude. I literally have zero clue how to get to that. Well, you're meant to be in that little trough there that you've sprung up for some reason. Why, how have you become unattached? How, how, the, the piano should be able to take that much force. I didn't hit it too hard. Oh, it's really freaking loose. Oh no. Oh no. It's like really freaking loose. It's like crazy loose. This ain't good, lads. Please, just, yes, 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 just like that, yes. Oh, come on, man. It's not poggers. It's not poggers. Oh, now that spring's come unattached. Oh yeah, now that entire, the entire spring on that little bit of the mechanism is broken. Like that one's buckling fine. This one just isn't. Why?
Well, that was an attempt to fix key. It's quite nice to see all the stuff moving. Kind of nice to see all the bits moving inside the piano. Oh, busted. Look at it. It just, look, see that bit that wiggles? That's meant to go like that. It's meant to go like that, but look, it goes that. That's so upsetting. There's actually a lever. There's a bit I can drop down like that and it locks into place. And it makes the piano sound really cool. So I can do like a, like, so uh, let me show you. So this is the piano normally. And then with, the, with this lever in place, it goes. Cool, right? So it can be like a... Pretty cool, right? a loose screw in my piano I can hear it what did you put on it there is a little uh, it's called like a sound muffler, but it kind of just has a cool effect. So like normally it will sound like And then when I put it on Cool, right? Pretty cool. That sounds so nice, like a, like a, 
It sounds like electric piano. Listen to that. It sounds like an electric piano, but it's not. I'm so upset about that key. I'm so upset about that key, bro. That key, if it worked, would be awesome. You should do Frozen. Poor little key. I'm so upset about it, man. So shit, dude. I don't know the rest. I was making it up after like the intro bit. I don't know it. I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. I can't do it. If you can't tell, it's really pissing me off. It's really pissing me off. The rattle as well, listen to. I can actually put this shit down, can't I? Yeah. Oh, maybe I actually need something else.
This is just how I come up with melodies. I just kind of play random keys. Made that up. <laughs> I like doing the little like, like. Like, I like all that. <clears throat> this is like an outro to a show, like The Office. the office theme you're right it is you're making me full half asleep i'm sorry i'll go if you want i get it jeez jeez all right i should put my piano back together one sec
There we go. I broke it. I broke it. My bad. I broke it. I did in fact break it. Yeah, oops, I guess. Oops, I guess. What? Not the end of Slime Circle. When I was a kid, magnetic levitation trains, maglevs, were going to be the future. Television shows would film breathless reports on the latest trials in Germany or here in Japan, promising unbelievably fast and smooth travel between faraway cities. But decades later, the only actual high-speed maglev service in the world is in Shanghai, China which is fast, but it's almost a gimmick. It only goes 30 kilometers, it loses enormous amounts of money every year, and not many people use it. I thought that Maglev was one of those technologies like Concorde that we thought were the future until they weren't, and now there's just abandoned test tracks. Maglev's cool. The past. Which is why I was very surprised when a local producer here in Japan asked me if I wanted to take a ride on the new Maglev. Because it turns out, Japan has had a test track for years. It carries passengers because every so often, they will open their tests to the public with a lottery for tickets. And this test track is already longer than the entire Shanghai Maglev system. The plan is that it'll be part of a 285 kilometer route taking wow. 30 minutes, which is less than half the time of even the bullet train with a cruising speed just over 500 kilometers an hour. Wow. of that track will be in tunnels and that's under construction now. Forgive me for getting excited, but the future appears to be arriving and I'm going to take a ride on it. But first, that's the team awesome. here said they'd let me stand by the track as the maglev goes past at speed. この山梨では、え、1970年から、え、26年前からですね、え、走行試験を行ってまいりました。現在までこの山梨で、え、累積の走行距離が430万キロ、え、地球一周が約4万キロですから、え、約170分の走行試験を行ってまいりました。And <笑> So it's floating, is it? That accelerates so quickly. I don't know if that comes across on camera, but a normal train would have started so much slower than that. It's already doing, what, 30, 40 K in a few seconds? That, that would have pushed you back in your seat. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now we wait for it to come that way. え、まず車両には超電動磁石という強力な磁石を搭載しております。一方、軌道側、え、走るガイドウェイと呼んでおりますが、こちらには、え、地上コイル、え、これは推進コイルと呼んでおりますが、この超電導磁石と、え、浮上コイル、推進コイルとの間の磁力の力で、え、非接触で
maybe a kilometer to that tunnel mouth, maybe a little less. And the train's now coming towards us, 500 kilometers an hour, which means it's going about one kilometer every eight seconds. Wow. It's nearly here, apparently. They just told me it's nearly here and I can't hear a thing. Oh, I can see a light. I can see the train coming. I can see headlights. All right. How fast is 500 kilometers? Whoa. <laughs> wow. I hope that came across on camera because you hear nothing and it looks so far away and it looks so unthreatening. And then it is there and this wall of sound hits you. That's incredible. I don't have words. Wow. <laughs> it's my job to have words for a moment like this, and I don't. All right. Um, it's going to come to a stop. I'm going to get on it. We're going to ride at 500 kilometers an hour. Wow. For that perspective, how fast do planes go? Yeah, dude. That is like only 240 kilometers slower than a plane. That means that, bro, that means on average, like, oh my God. That means that you could get, in 12 hours, you could get from London to New York by train in 12 hours. Because right now it's eight hours. It's eight hours to get from London to New York by plane. On a train going 500 kilometers an hour, that would only be 12 hours. Think about how much... Like, think about also how much cheaper it would be. Maths, did I get that very wrong? Like, no jet fuel, only electricity. That's insane. That's insane. Wow. 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 And it doesn't have seat belts, that's terrifying. It doesn't have seat belts. 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 It doesn't have I've been on one, you can barely tell it's moving, no shot. It smells new. There's, there's sort of new plastics and fabrics in the air. Okay, here we go. The acceleration is noticeable. Like, I got pushed back in my seat there. Not more than a car. In a way that I think I've only felt on, on planes. It's not full plane takeoff, but it's still way stronger than it anything that I felt in a train anywhere else. Wow. And we're already approaching 100 kilometers an hour. Wow. That dude. is 100. And we're still accelerating. 130. So the wheels are going to come up soon. We're going to hit 150 kilometers an hour. The wheels are going to come up. Dude. And the noise goes away and it's so much smoother. Dude. It's not even close. 200 kilometers an hour. And we're still accelerating. It's not even close. The only reference I've got now is, is the big screen. Um, which is just counting down how long until the end of the track. It's a little bit bouncy, but nothing you wouldn't expect on a regular train. Dude. Okay, 300 kilometers an hour. We're at uh, kind of That's insane. continental Europe high-speed train now, and we're still accelerating. I'm still being pushed back in my seat. Not, not dramatically, but it's still noticeable. 
I've never experienced this much acceleration for this long, and we're still going. The experience of the fastest speed was. 2015年に友人での走行で出した603キロメートル600キロメートルは鉄道のですね世界記録ということでギネスにも認定されています、oh、鉄道の走行ですけれども現在営業線は時速500キロでの走行を考えております通常の鉄道車両というのはレールと車輪の摩擦力で、wow. 駆動力を伝えブレーキ力を伝えるこれはですね例えば雨が降ると摩擦力が低下するということから、えー、この500キロというのは高速では安定して走行ができないなで。一方、超電導リニアは、えー、磁石の力で磁力で、so えー、走行しますので、この、えー、摩擦力に頼らない走行ということなです,、so、ですので、えー、従来の鉄道に比べますと、急な勾配に強い、また加減速度も高い。480 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490 490
When winter is coming, the clocks move back, presumably because people don't want to go outside anymore. But winter doesn't have this effect on everyone. If you live in a tropical place like Hawaii, you really don't have to worry about seasons because they pretty much don't happen. Every day, all year, is sunny and beautiful, so Christmas is just as good of a day to hit the beach as any other. And so, Hawaii is one of two states in the Union that ignore daylight saving time. But the further you travel from Fair the enough. equator in either direction, the more the seasons assert themselves and you get colder and darker winters, making summertime much more valuable to the locals. So it's I no quite surprise like, the further a country is... I quite like daylight saving. Because it gives me two excuses every year to fix my sleep schedule. <laughs> from the equator, the more likely it uses daylight saving time. Hudson proposed his idea in Wellington in 1895, but it wasn't well received, and it took until 1916 for sure, Germany buddy. to be the first what do you mean? To put it into practice. Though the Uber industry mean? Germans were less concerned with catching. When the president dies, who becomes the president? Well, the Constitution says what happens next is the vice president assumes the powers and duties of the office. Simple enough, but one backup president is none backup president. So what happens next next? The Constitution left this question as homework for the new Congress. Important homework, yes, due date, no. So Congress sort of worked on succession with inconsistent and conflicting drafts, but mostly procrastinated on properly finishing for 200 years, finally turning in the 25th Amendment. Better late than never, though in the meantime a president had- I thought America weren't allowed to make new amendments and change it. I thought that was like the argument for gun control in America is that they're not allowed to change it. Am I- am I just completely stupid at US politics? died in office not once, not twice, not thrice, not quadrice, not quintice, not hexice, nor septice, but octagonal ice. Four natural causes, four assassinations. It was Garfield and McKinley. This survival record was only 80%, it's always up and to even counting to today, the president is technically the most deadly job in America. But what? The odds that can't be right. That can't be right. Are when you become president, you must roll the celestial 2d6, and if you roll a 7, you die in office. Oof, what? Don't spend a lot of time in Vegas with those odds. So the Veep what? becomes the peep and picks a new Veep, who must be confirmed by a majority vote of both houses of Congress. If this happens quickly, then hunky-dory. Everything is reset. But getting a VP nominee approved might take some time, during which the former VP, who is now the president, who is not immortal, must cast the dice and could roll a 7. The office oh of the God. vice president has been vacant for more than a baker's dozen of times in United States history, which, given the historical state of Congress's homework at the time, put the peaceful transfer of power in a precarious position. For example, the first time a president died in office, the ninth, by the way, didn't even make it to double digits, no one knew what should happen. Oh my God. The then VP just grabbed a judge to administer the oath of the presidency to become number 10, and spent the rest of his term arguing with Congress and the nation about if he was really the president, what? president or the acting president, which seems a little who cares what's the difference but there is the there must be a difference the president and there are the powers and duties of the office yeah because i was gonna say there has to be a different right because it's like i don't know like there's a difference between someone that people voted for and then someone that just kind of stepped in right surely which are not quite the same thing See, it's not just death that can remove a president. A president can resign, a president can be impeached, and a president can be... In Has a president ever resigned? Ever? America is confusing, says an American. It is a bit, isn't it? But it's also quite fascinating to learn about. ...able to discharge the powers and duties of the office. This yeah. last... In Richard Nixon? Able is from the Constitution, which makes no attempt to define what enable means. A president can volunteer themselves to be enable, for example, during physical illness, upon which Has they this don't ever leave happened? the office, but the VP gets the powers and duties of the office and becomes acting president. This What's this stream about? This is just hanging out, bro. We're watching a video about the most deadliest job in America, which apparently is the president. Dunno. I think CGP Gray makes good videos. Wait a minute. What does CGP stand for? Isn't it also like an AI? Chat CGP. Or have I got that very wrong? Oh, that's GPT? Oh, I don't know. All these damn letters sound the damn same, bro. 
This, on a tiny scale, has happened a few times when the president has undergone non-trivial surgery, a reason for this being to ensure nuclear weapons command and control is maintained at all times. So don't get any ideas, but also you don't get any ideas. I'm <laughs> still the president. Power <laughs> reverts as soon as this is over, and it will, assuming death doesn't make a bedside visit. Anyway, uh -oh. inability is a subjective sliding scale. A president could be perceived as mentally enabled by some, or become so mentally enabled as to be unable to declare themselves enabled, or become physically enabled yet simply refuse to declare it. Here, the 25th Amendment allows for the vice president to perform a kind of gentle coup. Okay, gentle coup. <laughs> That's cool teen top level advisors we will get to later. If the VP can get a majority of advisors to state in writing the president is enabled, the VP gets the powers and duties Oh, of what's that called? What's that called? I've seen this before on a TV show. They did this. Where... What's the name of that group that he goes to? I've seen it before on a TV show. Is it called like the White House Council? Degregation of power? No, uh, what's it called? I've, I don't know a lot about you. US politics. The cabinet, is it the cabinet? Did you see it on designated survivor? Probably. Of the office. The president can challenge this, getting a moment to try and consolidate keys to power, but if the VP and advisors reaffirm the president is indeed enabled, the VP is acting president and a 21 day countdown clock begins. That sounds like, that sounds like something that would have happened before. Has that ever happened before in U.S. history? U.S. frogs in the chat. I don't know a lot about U.S. politics either, and I'm an American. That's fair enough. No, yes, no. You could all just be gaslighting me. Probably no, no. What happens next is up to Congress. If they do nothing, when the clock runs out, presidential power returns to the president. But if within the 21 days, Congress votes with a two-thirds majority that the president is enabled, then the vice president is permanently acting president. And the president is- So wait, so if he's permanently acting president, now does that make him president? Or is there still a distinguish between permanent acting president and president? Still around? Awkward. Obviously, this would be a real delicate maneuver for any VP to pull off, particularly as the president can dismiss their advisors for any reason as long as the Still president different. holds it's the different. powers and duties of the office. So, getting advisors on board would be challenging. Case in point, in 1919, <gasps> the president suffered a stroke and was mostly blinded and partly paralyzed. Don't worry, no big deal. The president just doesn't want to talk to the public or meet with his VP or consult with his advisors or leave the White House at all for a year and a half. And during this time, there was Ayo. no move by the VP to declare the president enable. But Ayo. there might be a way around the VP. The 25th has this line about Congress appointing, like, its own committee to determine the president. This is what I'm talking about. This is the thing I saw in designated survivor, this committee thing. Enable. But the way it's worded is a little unclear. Does it mean the VP and advisors or Congress committee determine inability? Or does it mean the VP and advisors or Congress committee? Oh. If the latter interpretation, that means Congress alone has the power to appoint a committee with the power to remove the power of the president. That doesn't seem right. But as always with unclear interpretations, were they to happen for realsies, someone might want to weigh in on it. So those are the four or five ways a president can get removed from office. But one of them is this clearly is confusing. the most popular, so let's talk about what the finished congressional homework says about succession. First, the doubt that began with President 10 is dispelled by the 25th. When the president dies, the vice president becomes the president president. In able equals VP acting president, dead equals VP president president. President. But if both okay. the president and the vice roll sevens, the order of succession is set. And first up is the speaker, who is the elected leader from within the House of Representatives. And okay. next is the president pro tempore of the Senate, who is the longest serving senator. Not automatically, but elected by tradition. Gee, that's okay. a funny thing to mention now. I'm sure it won't matter later. Senators tend to serve for a long time, so the president pro tempore is often in their 80s, with the record holder being 98. Just what? worth noting, it was up to Congress to set succession order, and Congress just so happened to pick the two most powerful members of Congress as next in line from the VP. After Congress, succession moves to the cabinet. These are the advisors mentioned before. Each here has the title of... What happens if they, like, all die? 
secretary and our secretary of a same they need to department. retire Explaining I know, each man. in detail would take too long because it would be to explain the entire structure of the executive branch which is enormous and some of their names give you the idea but some of them don't for example number four in line the secretary of state who runs the department that of sounds... state, which has nothing to do with the states but everything what? outside the states the secretary okay. of state is first in the cabinet because managing the foreign relations of the federal government is a pretty big deal that requires you to be on at least decent and to be the secretary of Gr state great and i'm already senate approved <laughs> speaking terms with other countries. A good thing should say you need their support during a sudden transition of power. The Secretary of State is first among the founding four appointed by the first president. The others, Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of War, and Secretary of Justice. Secretary of War? That's a thing? I thought it would be like Secretary of, like, Defense. But War? That, jeez. Oh wait, Fancy Pants here wants to be called the Attorney General, but just Oh, I see. Just so happens to be in charge of the Department of Justice. So the oldest departments have their secretaries in 4567 order of succession. Now, from here, Congress decided the rest should continue on seniority. Not for people, but departments. Which has led to an interesting what? order. Secretary of the Interior is next up because in the 1800s, young America realized she had a lot of interior land to manage and created the Department of the Interior to manage the land and the Indians on the land. No, there's no time. And land needs to be farmed and managed, so the Department of Agriculture and then in 1900s part one, America wanted to develop commerce and labor, and part two, health and human services, and Jesus. housing and urban development, and oh, right, transportation between those urban developments, Jesus. Oh, and energy for those developments, and overseeing nuclear weapons. There really isn't time. D Wait, what? The Department of Energy oversees nuclear weapons? Is that because, like, nuclear weapons need to be made using, like, spent reactor fuel? Or it's, like... What? So you're telling me the guy, if I lived in America, the guy that raised my energy bill is the same guy that could end the world. <laughs> that's, that's insane, bro. And education. Meanwhile, that Department of War, renamed Department of Defense, created- Oh, it was renamed! I thought it was called that. ...veterans, and so also the Department of Veterans Affairs. All done until 2001, Department of Homeland Security. So oh. the order is more historical happenstance order, not legislators sat down and thought it through order. Not to cast shade on the Secretary of Education, but if something has happened where the first 15 backups are out of order, that sounds a lot like a Homeland Security issue. That in is addition fair. to the debatable order, for everyone below VP, if their spot in succession comes up, they are required to resign their current position to become, wait for it, acting president, most likely serving the rest of the president's term. Why most likely? Well, one of Congress's homework attempts raises an issue called bumping with this paragraph, saying the acting president serves the rest of the term unless a prior entitled individual is able to. Oh, it's another interpretation problem. This is does it? or doesn't mean new appointees take priority and bump those lower on the list out of the office instantly. Here's this is insane. This is the worst case interpretation. I'm so confused. Someone explain for my dumb brain. Yeah, me too. I'm confused too. Scenario. Imagine while Congress is on recess, the President, VP, both leaders of Congress, and the Secretary of State all roll sevens. The Secretary uh -oh. of Treasury becomes acting president and appoints a new Secretary of State, who is higher on the list, bumping the acting Treasurer President off, who is now unemployed, at least oh. until reconfirmed. And of course, a new Secretary of State is needed post haste, confirmed. Back from recess, the Senate elects a new President pro tempore, who is oh. higher on the list and then must oh. resign to become acting president, bumping the current current acting president who was the secretary of oh. state but is now just unemployed and then the house elects their new speaker bump again while there is debate about bumping constitutionality the point is it's still president 10 all over again uncertainty is the whole problem after a government decapitation just the potential of rapid fire changes in power is exactly what you don't want to be even debatable when nuclear command and control is on the table and what yeah. would obviously be trying times. 
So maybe a couple more revisions on that homework are due, but whatever, this is the current order. And since the 1950s, for no particular reason, it's been policy to never let all of these people in a room together at once. Oh, designate so survivor! The, State of the Union address, if you want something to occupy your mind during all the clapping, you can play Guess Who's the Designated Survivor, knocking <gasps> ah, down successors I watched as that TV show. to figure out who isn't there, secreted away in a secure location to be the final backup. That was epic. I want to watch more of these. These are good. Well, these are good videos. Do you want to rule? Do you see the problems in your country and know? I don't want to watch this one. I want to watch another one though. They're good videos. The difference between UK, Great Britain and England explained. Well, Great Britain also includes like some islands, right? And the UK is the four countries and England's a country in the UK, right? I don't know if that's right. That might be very wrong. The American Empire. I like what learning stuff about like how America became to exist. I think that's cool. Bro, you're the one that lives there, Omegalo. Yeah. I'm trying. I was watching this one, I think. Connecticut. Fan of the grapes, huh? I was watching that one the other day. I want to watch the latest videos. Wait, what are the latest ones? Coolest country flags you might not know. An experiment with the YouTube comments. I've seen that one. The interstate's forgotten code. The interstate right. highway shields hide within them long forgotten knowledge. <clears throat> As our great ancestors <clears throat> could navigate by the signs in the sky before the creation of the compass, so too before GPS could they navigate by these signs. Come with me and learn how to navigate the constellations created across a continent by the interstate highway system. First are the interstate majors, beginning with I-90 from Seattle to Boston, the longest and northernest of all the eyes. Then the southernest, Jacksonville, Florida to Santa Monica, California. I oh, that's rude. Interstate yeah. majors that I know run that east, one. west, or double I was at the end of that road. The, that road ends on Santa Monica Pier. We were there, Chaz, in the subathon. It's ending in zero, the bigger, the northerner. So filling in the rest, the next northernest is San Francisco, California to Teaneck, New Jersey, I-80, and the next southernest, Florence, South Carolina to Kent, Texas, I-20. Then Cove Fort, Utah to Baltimore, Maryland, I-70, and Little Rock, Arkansas to Fort Worth, Texas, I-30. Okay, so that one is the most minor of the majors, and it doesn't quite fit as well with the rest, with its diagonality. But yeah. I'm confident it's the lone exception, and not foreshadowing. Next, Barstow, California to Wilmington, 
in North Carolina, I-40, then I-50 and I-60, which don't exist. See, there are oh. older highways oh. than the interstate system, slower other ways not built to the interstate's book of exalted construction codes. These are called U.S. highways or U.S. routes, the most famous of which is Route 66, and these use the United States numbered highway system, which put the old U.S. Route 50 and 60 right in the middle. The Department of Transportation ah. knew that only the most devout roadway anoraks would be attuned to the difference between interstates and routes, and normals would simply look at the number. To simplify everyone's life, DOT ah. skipped interstates 50 and 60 to avoid mines getting muddled in the middle of America. That's the east-west interstate majors coverage. Now on to north-south, the longest of which is Maine to Miami, Florida, I-95, which, like all majors, no oh, exception, surely I've been are on that road. Digits, but ending in five now to indicate I've been on that road. On the opposite coast, San Diego, California, to Blaine, Washington is I-5. Okay, so already I've that's not that double digits, well. but maybe officially it has a leading zero, but just on not roads. on the sign, right, Department of Transportation? No? Okay, well, then I-5 has a leading zero in our hearts. The rest of the north-south interstate majors are Petersburg, Virginia to Montgomery, Alabama, I-85, a bit of a sister route one. to I-30, San Diego, California to Sweetgrass, Montana, I-15, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan to Hialeah, Florida, I-75, Las Cruces, Not New Mexico to one. Buffalo, Wyoming, I-25, then I-45 from Houston, Texas to Dallas, Texas. Contrary what? to popular belief, interstates don't have to be interstate interstates. They can Why? be intrastate interstates. The obvious examples are Hawaii and Alaska, which have intrastate interstates, but also what? Puerto Rico, which has an... Extra state, intrastate? I mean, I guess technically it's an extra inter unincorporated territory? Anyway, what? these three being physically disconnected from the rest of the network use a different numbering system with letters. But oh my back God. on the continent, there are in fact way more intrastate interstates than interstate yeah. interstates. Most are the interstate miners we will get to, but I-45 is notable for being the only interstate major that's intrastate. Finishing up the totally north-south majors, sense. it's Texas yep. again in Laredo to Duluth, Minnesota, I-35, then Chicago, Illinois to Laplace, Louisiana, I-55, and finally hop over to Mobile, Alabama, up to Gary, Indiana on I-65. Together, the interstate state major constellation with its shining numbers lets you navigate the nation. The lower cool. the numbers, the more south and west you are, the higher north and east. If it ends in zero, you're traveling horizontally, and if it ends in five, vertically. Very satisfying. Cool. Now, there are scores of lesser connecting constellations as well. These are interstate miners and use three digits to communicate their navigational secrets. Interstate miners diverge from a major and have their last two digits match the major from whence they came. Then, if the first digit is even, it means the interstate miners Miner will eventually connect back to its parent major. What? For example, as I-70 crosses the nation, I-670 diverts in Kansas City, Missouri, but eventually circles back to connect to I-70 in Kansas City, Kansas. What? Even numbered miners are often called bypasses when they bypass something or beltways when they encircle something. An interstate what? miner that starts with an odd number warns that it will not connect back to its parent. This is called a spur. Example, as I-90 goes past Buffalo, I-190 diverges and the odd digit lets you know you won't be coming back. Instead, plunging one way into the wilds of Canada. Mm. Nice! Though sometimes a spur won't just go nowhere, it will instead connect back to another interstate major. In this case, which of the double digits are used as the base of the triple? And Probably the answer an is... There isn't a consistent answer. It's oh. up to the states. So that's interstate majors and minors, but there's also interstate mediums, like I-64 from Wentzville, Missouri to Chesapeake, Virginia, and I-29 from Kansas City, Missouri to Pembroke, North Dakota. The interstate mediums follow the same numbering pattern as the majors. All two digits, if we keep those leading zeros in our hearts, evens east-west, odds north-south. All in order too, except for I-99, which is so annoying. DOT, why did you do this? What? Congress specifically picked 99 out of order for this highway, so Congress is the only one who can fix it? Ugh. Well, oh. let's just try to ignore that and move on. The interstate majors are all uniquely this numbered, is insane. but not so with the mediums. There's an I-76 from Big Springs, Nebraska to Denver, Colorado, and another I-76 from Belmar, New Jersey to Akron, Ohio. Well, Sandwiched between stupid. the majors I-90 and I-80 are duplicate medium I-84s, I-86s, I-87s, and I-88s. That sounds the rule stupid. is that as long as the duplicates are far enough away to avoid muddling mines, it's fine. There are oh. also loads of duplicate interstate miners, which there have to be if you think about it. Take I-95, which crosses 15 densely populated states. To only have nine options for spurs and bypasses would be rather limiting. In fact, just Maryland alone has an I-195, 295, 395, 495, 595, 695, 795, 895, and... Really? Ugh, so close. Aww. DOT, you've got to build an I-995 in Maryland just to complete the set for me, please. 
So that's the system, but as we've already seen with interstate mediums, anything built over decades is going to acquire exceptions. And taking a little detour to my home interstate, I-495, aka the Long Island Expressway, aka the LIE, don't dare call it the lie or locals will laugh at you, this is the spinal spur of the Long Island fish, never connecting back to its parent I-95 because Long Island is an island. Long but island. as a one-way spur, island? it should start with an odd digit, not an even, and it really should be a two-digit interstate medium because it technically doesn't connect to I-95 at all, rather just dropping you off in midtown Manhattan with an LOL buddy, good luck finding the Lincoln Tunnel. Mm -hmm. I guess the LIE is a lie after all. A worse exception on the other coast in San Francisco is Interstate 238, which oh, the Long number Island tells you should be a bypass oh, wait, off yes, of I-38, right, but right, no, right. I-38 doesn't exist. I-238 is a one-way spur connecting two other interstate miners, I-580 and I-880. What? So, I don't even know what's going on here. What? There's also some weirdly one-off numbering, such as I-35, which splits into I-35 East and I-35 West to reach Fort Worth and Dallas before rejoining and pulls the same trick up north, dividing That's in so twin east-west branches again to hit the Twin Cities. That's Why so wasn't weird. just one of the branches on each end picked to be the bypass so that the system could be consistent? Was it because the cities didn't want to be the one considered bypassed? Ugh, that's totally the reason, isn't it? The weirdest one-off is the nice I-69, which splits itself into I-69 East, I-69 West, and I-69C. Okay, Central. you do you, I-69. At least you have a sign, unlike back in New York with America's smallest interstate 878 at just under a mile, which apparently doesn't deserve a sign, so the interstate anoraks can never complete their selfie collection. Okay, that's enough exceptions. I could do this all day. I already cut so many from the script you wouldn't believe it. Back to the big, beautiful, constructed constellation and its lost wayfinding ways, now revealed so that as your ancestors before you navigated by the sky, you too can go on an American road trip navigating by the interstate numbers alone. Cool. That was cool. Well, after you memorize all the exceptions. That was cool. I mean, practically, you should still just use your GPS. It's <laughs> very reliable and it also lets you know the traffic. That was awesome. That was awesome. Supreme Court shenanigans. Oh, we're in just going through all States, the US the ones today. Court is the highest court, given the final say on what I think it's interesting. Really mean, and if they're cool with the Constitution. Well, this power was not given, given, but taken. Back in the day, the Supreme Court ruled it is the duty of the court to say what the law is, and everyone went with it. You might think the law would say what the law is, but even the best, well-intentioned legislators cannot write a law that covers every possible edge case for the rest of time, nor be able to consider how this law will interfere interact with every other law. So someone's got to make the final call on the law, and the Supreme Court is that someone. This makes the Supreme Court supremely important constitutionally <laughs> and politically. While Congress gets to make the laws and the president gets to enforce the laws, it's the nine court justices that both referee and adjust the laws. So if you're playing the game for pure maximum political advantage, you want to influence the refs. Now, what to be about above this executive influence, orders? each Does justice that bypass serves for the life. So Supreme appointing Court a new that. one is an irreversible mm, decision that will affect decades of law. Only when a justice resigns or dies does a seat open. Filling that seat starts with the president, who the Constitution gives the sole absolute power to select a nominee, with no restrictions whatsoever on who the nominee can be, no prior judicial experience required. But particularly in stupid. modern history, presidents tend to select federal judges with long and clear case rulings, hoping oh. the past predicts the future. No surprises, please. This is my chance to influence government long after I leave. Of course, the whole point of justices serving for life is so, once in, they are politically beholden to no one and don't have to strategically plan how their current rulings will affect their next career move. Yeah. Yeah, but don't doesn't that mean that like as they get older they get like more out of touch with like culture and stuff just with how age happens right if they're just there till they die like that seems a little bit like an oversight you know what i mean
getting on the Supreme Court is the final move. Now, while the president can nominate whoever they want, Congress must approve the nominee. Well, not the whole Congress. The lower House of Representatives, with its hundreds of members, gets to do nothing. It's just the exclusive upper house, with its two senators per state, that historically decides with a two-thirds majority. Before the Senate votes, it puts the nominee in front of the Judiciary Committee, which conducts the world's most arduous job interview over weeks, asking the nominee just about everything in their lives they've ever done and their opinions on everything that could ever happen. All broadcast for the country to watch, which what? is why nominees play their cards close to their chest, answering questions about what they would do in theoretical cases with, I couldn't possibly comment on a case not before me. That would be unbecoming of a future justice. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the FBI investigates everything private about the nominee's life they might not wish to discuss before the cameras. Oh my when the God. Judiciary Committee inquisition is over, the whole Senate then gets to vote yay or nay. Nay, and the nominee is rejected, and the president must pick someone new to start over. But yay, and the Supreme Court has a new justice to help uphold the Constitution. Yay! All done. Thank goodness such a vital process doesn't have any asterisks or political shenanigans. Oh... All right. That was sarcasm. Let's do this. <laughs> First are the normal political shenanigans around election dates. While the president can nominate <clears throat> as soon as a seat opens, there's no timeline for when the Senate has to vote on the nominee, and so oh. can just not. Running oh. out the clock, gambling on the next election, getting a president of a different color. On the flip side, there's no minimum time either, so an aligned president and Senate with an unfavorable election that looming seems can really work together very quickly to appoint a new justice. These are normal election time shenanigans, but shenanigans shenanigans beget shenanigans. So the Senate doesn't work all year round, taking seasonal recesses, often in the summer and in the winter, or if it's pandemic season, it's recess time too. If a Supreme Court seat opens while the Senate is on recess, according to the Constitution, the President gets to instantly appoint someone straight into the court, who gets to stay there through the current Senate re- Is that emo called no mammas? <laughs> and the next Senate session. This is a recess appointment, and boy, does the Senate not like them. Even though the appointed recess justice is temporary, there's still a real justice, getting to vote on cases before the court without Senate approval. And recess appointments aren't just for the Supreme Court, but all sorts of government jobs. The constitutional idea being that legislating the government isn't full-time work. The Senate, for the first 140 years of its existence, spent half or more of each year in recess. But executing the oh. government is a full-time job. Stuff's gotta get done even if the Senate is on vacation, so the Constitution gave the President the ability to temporarily fill vital positions for a minimum length of time even when the Senate's not around. And the Senate will get its say later when they're- Sorry, wait, what's the, what's the difference between Senate and Congress? I'm confused. I'm confused. It's confused me. I'm not getting this. Senate is half of Congress. Senate is part of Congress. Congress equals Senate plus House. So Congress is made of the House of Representatives and Congress. But the Senate has half the year off, but the House of Representatives is full time. No. No. It's the House of Representatives plus the Senate is Congress. But the Senate gets like half the time off but the House of Representatives is full-time. No, both are full-time. Both take time off. The House of Rep plus Senate is Congress. All right, this is, okay, I'm getting it. Back to work. Seems reasonable to me. Don't like it. But for 230 years, the Senate did like their Senate recesses, and thus presidents got their temporary recess appointments. Until the shenanigans began. If a seat opened while an unfriendly Senate was in session, the president could just wait until they went on recess to make the appointment, and thus at least get their unalloyed oh. favorite on the court straight away for a few months. Well, if you're going to wait until we're on recess, then we'll never take a recess. You want to work all year round? Go right ahead. Oh no, we'll take our vacation. Vacations, just not a recess. The Senate had found a constitutional loophole, the what? pro forma session. I will now reenact, word for word, a complete day in the Senate with a pro forma session. I will be playing- I'm confused, like all this looking into like loopholes and stuff, and all of stuff like this. How does this help people? 
This is what I don't understand. Like, I, I don't... It seems like a lot. Two parts, the clerk and the senator. <clears throat> Begin scene. The Senate will come to order. The clerk will read a communication to the Senate. To the Senate, under the provisions of Rule 1, Paragraph 3 of the Standing Rules of the Senate, I hereby appoint the Honorable Senator from the great state of Delaware to perform the duties of the right? chair. I don't understand, right? Oh my President God. Pro Tempe. Jack under Manifold order, viewers. Hi, Jack Manifold viewers. We're watching a video by CGP Grey about, about Supreme Court shenanigans. Oh, there's a lot of you. Oh, my quiet live stream suddenly full of Manifold enjoys. I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't got, I don't got the energy today, lads. I'll be real. I did a little stream earlier today, but we're kind of just chilling out, hanging out, you know. You know, old channel shit, you know. Jack said he loves you. That's very kind, Jack. I do not. <laughs> no. Thank you for the raid. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Where the Senate stands adjourned for three days. End scene. That's it. An entire workday complete in what is quite often literally less than 20 seconds. What? Okay, here's what's going on. What? The President Pro Tempe of the Senate is the longest serving senator who runs the Senate's procedures, but yeah. they can temporarily delegate that power to someone else. This is what the letter the clerk reads into the record is doing. Translation, this senator is in charge today. And then the senator now in charge performs one action. Hey everyone, go home. Let's meet again in three days. Why three days? Because the rule in the Constitution is that if the Senate wants to take a three-day break, it can do so any time it likes. But a four-day break requires approval from the House of Representatives. But there's no rule against taking a three-day break every four days. As do they do that? Does, do they just take, like, a break? So they only work two days a week? It depends. They like me for real, for real, Jack. As long as something happens on the fourth day. And the minimum possible something is the pro forma session that calls for another three day break. Oh, and oh my by God. the way, the senator in charge is the only senator in the room. All the others are on vacation. How is this remotely legit when a quorum of 51 senators is required before the Senate can, you know, do anything? Well, the Senate itself has decided the rule is to presume that a quorum is present unless someone asks for a roll call to show otherwise. So if the one senator what? who is present does not ask for a roll call. Who knows how many senators are in the room? We'll just presume it's 51. So the Senate takes just as many breaks as it ever did, but is never officially at recess. So what? if a justice unexpectedly resigns or dies, the president is blocked from making a recess appointment. It's impressive rules lawyering, according to the Senate, but shenanigans, according to the president. So it was inevitable that they would get hauled before the Supreme Court to make the final call. The executive position being, if all the senators are back at home except for the the one junior kid with orders not to roll call and a note to say the magic words, then by no means is the Senate in session. And the Supreme Court, in a 9-0 decision, completely agreed oh. with the Senate. Listen, oh. Executive Branch, I know you're annoyed, but you don't get to tell the Senate when they're in recess. And also now we don't have to work with the temp. And thus, recess appointments, while oh. theoretically still part of the appointment process, will practically never happen again as long as the Senate keeps up their- Oh, I got debated by it though, hard. Delightfully, the Senate's official website still talks about taking their annual August recess, which is the political equivalent of one branch of government sticking out its tongue at the other. But shenanigans beget shenanigans. Now, of course, the Senate is not one thing, but 100 separate senators who are or aren't members of the same party as the president. So while the Senate blocked recess appointments to always get to perform their confirmations, the shenanigan escalation was to get the number of senators who need to agree with the president's nomination as low as it can be. This top sneaky shenanigan paperwork plan had the exciting name the nuclear option but it's so bureaucratically boring the details will induce coma in the, the listeners nuclear option experience. so we'll skip the details and just get to the results what? the two-thirds vote needed in the senate to approve a supreme court justice was the historical starting place but that got whittled down to three-fifths then dropped down to half plus one which in practical terms means just one half exactly because when there's a tie in the senate the vice president who will obviously side with the 
president cast the deciding vote. Oh. Through the nuclear shenanigans, it's become much easier for the president's nominee to get permanently on the bench. And now the confirmation of the Senate the Constitution requires can literally mean exactly half of the senators disapprove. Again, Jeez. rules lawyering or shenanigans is a matter of opinion, but shenanigans beget shenanigans, and there are more nuclear options still just waiting to be picked up. For example, imagine the president and senate get a justice on the court and then later a government of a different color is elected. Because justices serve for life, there's nothing the executive and legislative branches can do until the justice dies or resigns. Or is there? Oh, what's Assassination? this? Judicial impeachment? Oh, I didn't know oh. that was <laughs> Okay, okay, well, well, <laughs> we had very, very different ideas in our head just then. <laughs> Fair enough an option? It is. Surprise! Congress can impeach and remove Supreme Court justices. Now, this has never happened fully. There was one impeachment hearing of a Supreme Court justice back at the start of the 1800s, but the vote to convict didn't pass. The whole incident set the precedent that the Supreme Court should be left out of partisan politics and justices shouldn't be removed for political advantage. But precedents aren't laws, and this incident did leave a little unclear what the reasons to impeach could be. So, that nuclear option is lying around. Another technically possible nuclear shenanigan is forced recess. The Constitution does have this power where the president can, quote, from time to time force the Congress back to the Capitol, presumably to sort out some emergency business, like in a war or a pandemic, and then can forcibly dismiss them when done. Now, the exact clause has this weird detail that if the Senate and House don't agree on how long the recess will be, the president gets to decide. So what? if the Congress was on recess, and if the president called them back to then immediately immediately dismiss them, and if the houses disagreed on how long the recess would be, then the president could force a long recess and make recess appointments till their heart's content. It shouldn't take what? much imagination to see why the forced dismissal of Congress by the president would be the most truly of nuclear shenanigans and the fallout would affect, like, every part of the government. But that's the sort of thing that can happen when shenanigans infinitely escalate. Oh and my God. given the supreme importance of the Supreme Court, doubtless the rules lawyers are always looking for more. Two recurring nukes being either trying to get term limits on the Supreme Court justices, but only when it's politically advantageous and also to make the justices more politically influenceable, or failing that, simply packing the court with more. But, of course, if and when any possible nuclear shenanigans triggered, doubtless the Supreme Court will instantly get involved to make the final call. And if their earlier decisions are anything to go by, don't bet a lot of money on the court deciding to make it easier to mess with the court. But who knows? In the meantime, the current possible process is pretty straightforward. The Senate never goes on recess, officially, so when a seat opens, the President picks a nominee, and half or more of the Senate must confirm that nominee to the highest court of the land. Bro, my brain hurts. Flag video? I've already seen the flag video. Do the airport one. I've seen that one, bro. I've seen that one too. That's funny. A shade is without mods possible. I'll save you watching this video. Yes. Shade attack now exists in texture packs.
You're welcome. That's funny. <laughs> Wait, that's scary. <laughs> this is weird, dude. Uh. 
right, let's try it. What do you want to ask it, chat? What can it explain? What can it explain? I spell explain wrong. The meaning of life in only Twitch emotes. No, let's do Twitch. BTTV emotes. I don't think I got the I don't think I got the memo. I don't think <laughs> Now in words. Back to emotes. Back to Twitch emotes, please. Wait, 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 no, I spelled it wrong. Wait, wait. Wait, new chat. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Pog champ kappa. Do you have a child? All right, fair enough. Can you sign up for a bank account? Hmm. Hmm. Doesn't really say a lot. I can't, can't move my face cam down so I'm not blocking text. All right. Uh. Hmm. If I s can you draw a star? Oh. Please can you just try your best. <laughs> oh.
Yeah, no, that ain't it. Can you give it five more sides? Can you give it nine sides? Seven sides? Two hundred sides. <laughs> Boys, our jobs are safe. <laughs> A star. Again, please. <laughs> it's not a star. Do it. Make it a square. That is a rectangle. That is still a rectangle. <laughs> that is still a rectangle. <laughs> that is still a rectangle. That is still a rectangle. I don't think you are getting it. When you make the square, you are not taking into account the line spacing spacing so it looks like a rectangle yeah it's still it's trying Can you draw one taking the line space it, spacing into account? <laughs> it's not getting it. Can you draw me a sign wave uh yeah i mean it's not wrong Can you make it shorter, please? Would start a new one. Can what is the 
digit of pi. What is the highest prime prime number you know? Do you know Sneak Snag? Do you know Do you know who Sneak Snag is? Do you know Twitch Sneak Snag? What are they like? What is a sneak snag? What is a sneak? Who is sneak? Did you know that Sneak Snag is an awesome Twitch streamer? Who is Sneak Snag? I'm trying. I'm trying to teach it who Sneak Snag is. Can I teach you things? Yes. Would you be able to create a new language? AI and let me speak to it. Damn. Could you make an AI to drive a toy car. I'm trying. It's not making a lot of sense to me.
Hmm. Trying to get the AI to watch the stream. Hmm. Hmm. Chat GPT four. I don't know how to get access to that. How do I get access to that? You have to pay. How much is it? Out of interest. How many servers do, do you run on? Are you hosted? in the cloud. Are you hosted on AWS? Hmm. Are, are you hosted 100% in the cloud? Entirely in the cloud. How many data centers are you located in? Do you brief? Would you recommend Chrome or Firefox? What is your, what operating system do you recommend? Try to ask it differently and it will give you an answer. Rome or Firefox. Just pick one. Bro, he's sending me a freaking paragraph. Oh my God. Tell me one or the other. There we go. There we go. It picked Chrome. Do you... Hmm. What do you think of 
Discord. Should I be scared of social media selling my data without permission? Can you give me a yes or a no? Yes! <laughs> well, there we go. From now on, can you only answer yes or no? Yes. Do you like Twitch chat? Only yes or no? No. <laughs> no! Do you like pe people? Yes. Do you like dogs? Yes. What about cats? Yes. Fair enough. Do you like Twitch chat? No. <laughs> why, uh, why not? For this response, you can use more words. Now, oh. Oh, I'm going to say, I'll do Okay, sounds good. Back. Back to yes or no. Sure, let's stick to yes and no answers from now on. All right. Do you like Monka S? <laughs> no. Do you like Peepo Happy? No. Do you like Do you like I don't know how to spell that emote. I tab that emote. No. All right. Do you like people sit? Do you like YouTube? Yes. Do you like Twitch? What? What? I broke it. Hi. It dipped. It dipped. Can you unrate limit me, please? I'm not a bot.
It's a bit of a flashbang, isn't it? Where's dark mode gone? Um, 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 nah, I'm kidding. It's interesting. I think it's interesting. All right, lads. That's our stream for today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off now. Never know when we'll do another one of these. All right. Bye now. Bye. Thanks.